thank you, thank you very much for the uh, opportunity to uh, have this lecture. Um, first slide uh, shows my uh, title, but it also uh, shows a potential conflict of interest. Because I'm an uh, uh, employee of uh, Nutritia Research, and uh, Nutritia is the brand with which we uh, market a product for the dietary management of early Alzheimer's disease, and that's called Suvenate. So in, uh, in short, um, the take-home message uh, of my presentation today is that in uh, Alzheimer's disease there is a, a specific nutritional need for uh, uh, nutrients that uh, are used to make uh, membranes and synapses. These uh, nutrients are uh, not sufficiently available in uh, patients with Alzheimer's disease. While on the other hand, these patients have an, addition, an extra need for these nutrients because of the loss of, of synapses. Um, that's why we think that uh, Alzheimer patients uh, have a special uh, nutrient requirement to, need, to uh, meet the uh, increased uh, demand for specific nutrients. And that's why we developed uh, our nutritional product called Souvenate to uh, address the nutritional needs. Now, since this is not an Alzheimer uh, uh, conference, but a, uh, a nutritional uh, symposium, I first would like to say something about uh, Alzheimer's disease. I think you all know uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease, uh, either from uh, hearsay or maybe uh, because of a relative uh, is uh, affected by the disease. It's the most common uh, uh, cause of uh, dementia. And, um, the, the, the known uh, pathologies are, of course, the, uh, the amyloid plaques in the brain and the tau uh, tangles in the brain. Uh, but another thing that occurs in the brain is a loss of connections. And especially uh, synaptic loss is very prominent in uh, Alzheimer's disease. So the loss of synapses is also a very good correlate with the cognitive impairments that uh, occurs in Alzheimer's disease. And the loss of synapses is already present in a stage before uh, the actual diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, which is called mild cognitive impairment. Visionaries like Dennis Selko already said about, uh, well, more than 10 years ago, that Alzheimer's disease is not a, uh, it's basically a synaptic failure. And since then, there are many uh, publications that confirmed the importance of synapse loss in Alzheimer's disease. These are the typical uh, pictures that are shown that indeed there is a uh, synapse loss in Alzheimer's disease. So this is from various publications, control subjects and uh, Alzheimer patients. And you see that on these uh, uh, dendrites, uh, there, is, there are less uh, dendritic spines. So part of the, the, the synapse, actually, the way that neurons communicate. On the other hand, with the new uh, techniques nowadays of lipidomics, it is more and more clear that uh, phospholipid synthesis is a very uh, important uh, uh, thing and that it is affected uh, in Alzheimer's disease. So there is increasing evidence that phospholipid changes occur during pathogenic processes in Alzheimer's disease. And this is exactly where we uh, fit in with our nutritional uh, intervention. Because we know that the synthesis of, uh, of membrane, of, well, we know that, that membrane mainly consists of phospholipids, a phospholipid B layer, and that for the synthesis of these phospholipids, you need a pathway that is called the Kennedy pathway. And this is from a publication of 1954, some time ago, this is a very well-known metabolic pathway, and it needs specific nutrients as precursors. So there is uridine, there is choline, or so sources of choline, like phospholipids, and there is specific, specific omega-3 uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids that are required to make uh, phospholipids in order to make new neuronal membrane. So membranes are the main constituents of synapses, you see here, so there's the dendritic spines in the XM terminal. And this is the way that, ne that neurons communicate. Now, this Kennedy pathway has uh, specific features, and one of them is that it uses uh, enzymes uh, that uses low affinity enzymes, which means that 
the amount of end product primarily depends on the amount of available uh, precursors. And we know that if you give choline to an animal, then you can measure elevated levels of uh, phosphocholine in the brain, as indicated here. We also know that if you then um, give uridine, you can dose dependently increase CDP choline, but still you don't have phospholipids, because then in addition you will need the omega-3 fatty acids, like for instance DHA, docosahexaenoic acid from fish oil, in order to make these phospholipids. So every one of the precursors can be rate limiting uh, for this process. This is our data from uh, some studies in, uh, in vivo where uh, animals are fed with uh, the precursors and you see that if you only give uh, uridine or if you only give DHA, you have a limited effect on phospholipid synthesis. However, if you give the combination of these two in a diet that already contains sufficient amount of choline, then you have a real increase in phospholipid synthesis. The same holds for uh, pre- and post-synaptic proteins, data I will not show due to time restrictions. Uh, but the important message is that these precursors work in harmony, so you have to give them all in sufficient amounts in order to facilitate the process. And again, the same holds for the dendritic spines, and the, the important parts of the, of the synapse. So if you give only one of the precursors, you have some effect, but only when you combine the precursors, you have a significant increase in spine density. Now the precursors, we uh, uh, found out, are not the only nutrients that are important in this process, but there are also some um, cofactors, as we call them cofactors that help uh, in the bio bioavailability of the precursors, for instance, choline and DHA. Um, and you may know the PENT pathway. The PENT pathway is a pathway that uh, acts in the liver and it's, uh, it's used, it's the, the only pathway in, in, in the, the body that can make choline. So most of the choline we, we take from our diet, but we can also, uh, our body can make some choline and it does so by the PEMP pathway. And the PEMP pathway uh, very much depends on specific B vitamins. So B vitamin 6, B vitamin 12 and folic acids are directly involved in the, the facilitation of this, uh, of this process. And in order to show that this theory also works in practice, uh, my colleague Nick van Wijk performed a number of experiments uh, where he gave uh, different amounts of, B, of these B vitamins uh, in, in the diet and then he looked at plasma levels of choline and DHA. And here you can see that only by increasing the amount of B vitamins in the diet, so not adding any choline, you can increase plasma choline levels, presumably by uh, enhancing the PEM pathway. And at the same time, you see a large reduction in total homocysteine in the plasma, and that's an indicator of B vitamin status. The same holds uh, the relation between B vitamins in the diet and uh, plasma DHA, so docosahexaenoic acid. If the uh, diet is poor, you have uh, low levels of, diet, uh, of DHA in the plasma, but if you increase the amount of, of, uh, of uh, B vitamins, you increase plasma levels of DHA. So DHA becomes available just by the presence of these B vitamins. These diets do not contain DHA themselves. It's only the B vitamins that make these uh, precursors more available. So in addition to the precursors, you would also need these specific cofactors. So, the enhanced uh, availability by Fortisin Connect, we call the, the, the total combination of cofactors and precursors uh, Fortisin Connect. And Fortisin Connect are the active ingredients of the product Souvenade. So the idea is that synapses are continu continuously being remodeled 
that they are part of the neuronal membrane. That membrane consists mainly of phospholipids. That phospholipids can be, uh, that depends on the presence of the precursors, but also uh, on the uh, cofactors like B vitamins, and that we uh, add antioxidants to protect the neuronal membrane and maintain its integrity and stability. We've done a lot of uh, preclinical research, both in vitro and in vivo models. And this is just a, a, a global uh, overview. So we increase, uh, for instance, neurite outgrowth. If we give these, uh, these components, we increase uh, synaptic contacts. We increase uh, 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 reduced neurodegeneration. And we improve learning and memory. And all these data I will not show, but you can read it in a very nice review article written by uh, Nick van Wijk, which is all about this nutrient combination and their effects relevant for uh, early Alzheimer's disease. Switching to humans and diet, we know for a long time that there is a relationship between diet and the probability of getting Alzheimer's disease. And uh, well, since we are in Spain, I'd always like to, uh, to point to, to the uh, relation between adherence to a, diet, to a Mediterranean diet and the probability of getting Alzheimer's disease. So if you adhere more to a uh, Mediterranean diet, there is a, a, lo a lower chance of getting Alzheimer's disease. However, what it is that does the trick in, in this Mediterranean diet is, is unclear. And we wanted to have a clear relation between uh, nutrients and Alzheimer's disease, and that's why we uh, went to the, back to the literature and did a um, meta-analysis on the uh, available data and a systematic re uh, review. And the, the results of that are, uh, are published in uh, Alzheimer's and Dementia. It's by uh, Sofia Lopez da Silva and others. And um, this is part of their, of their uh, results. So she focused mainly on the B vitamins and vitamin C, and she noticed that there are uh, lower levels available in patients with Alzheimer's disease. And when she looked at other uh, review and meta-analysis, she also saw that for all the uh, nutrients that are necessary for uh, phospholipid synthesis, uh, there are lower levels available in the plasma of uh, Alzheimer patients. Only for B6, there was uh, no obvious uh, lower level. But uh, then again, in all the older literature, they did not measure the active form of uh, B6. So it's not clear from that uh, measurements whether there is a an, an, um, functional uh, lower level of uh, vitamin B6 present. This is an, uh, an, a data uh, from uh, me uh, et al. In, in nutrition, she wrote a review about the, uh, the dietary uh, patterns in, in, in Alzheimer's. And um, the, this graph shows a biomarker magnitude in, in Alzheimer's disease. So in, from going from normal to dementia, uh, people go through various stages. Alzheimer's pathology is thought to, to be present for decades in, uh, before the actual diagnosis of dementia is set. Um, and we know that later in dementia there is a protein energy malnutrition, the clinical, but we, we now show that in the stages before that there is already lower levels of micronutrients and fatty acids presence in these patients. So we think that more of these uh, nutrients are consumed because of the disease process and the need of making more phospholipids. And that's why these nutrients are lower. So that's why we uh, decided to develop a, a nutritional product. And we call it Souvenade. We wanted to stimulate synapse formation, and we knew that it required specific nutrients. The nutrients are, are listed here, uh, and we call it Fortisin Connect. Uh, we know there is a lower nutrient status and altered nutrient metabolism in older people and Alzheimer patients. We know that the nutritional need cannot be met by a regular diet, because in that case, people would have to eat this next to their normal breakfast every day. 
And I mean, you can do, try this once, but you cannot do this every day, especially not when you're 75 years or older. And the hypothesis is that uh, Suvenate may successfully ad uh, address the unmet nutritional needs in people with ID. So that's where we started our uh, clinical trial uh, uh, plan with, uh, with this nutritional intervention. We first uh, went to uh, moderate AD uh, patients that are on, on medication, actually, uh, and uh, continued uh, towards the prodromal, the uh, pre-symptomatic uh, stages of, uh, of Alzheimer's disease. Now, this is the first study uh, with, uh, in the, the moderate, the later stage of Alzheimer's disease with more than 500 uh, patients included. They were on uh, double medication, most of them. As you see that uh, about uh, 90, over 90% was on uh, acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, but also uh, more than 60% was on the uh, NMDA antagonists. Um, and these uh, patients were indeed in the moderate stage as they had an MMSE score of about 19. Unfortunately, we didn't, did not see any effect of the nutritional intervention in this late stage of uh, Alzheimer's uh, disease. So we didn't give up and we went to an earlier stage thinking that, well, maybe on the one hand the uh, Alzheimer's medication might already induce a ceiling effect, which is difficult to, to uh, show a, a larger effect. On the other hand, in a late stage, you may uh, think that helping uh, phospholipid synthesis may not be as effective and as in earlier stages. So we went to uh, the mild uh, AD, and these are patients that were just diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and did not receive uh, medication yet. 200 patients over two arms, so there is a, the Suvenate and there is a control, an isocaloric uh, control product that is exactly the same uh, nutritional product but does not contain the nutrients that are in, for, that are in Fortacin Connect. Uh, these, were, uh, these patients were a, a little uh, earlier, so they have a higher score on their uh, min mental state examination, about 24, and no differences between control and Suvenate group. And then we were very pleased to see that indeed the, the proportion of patients that improved their memory performance on uh, the Suvenate uh, intervention was uh, much larger than on the control uh, intervention. So we decided to repeat this trial because one clinical trial is no clinical trial, two clinical trials is half a clinical trial. And this is the second trial where we continued uh, intervention again in over 200 uh, patients uh, recently diagnosed. We, uh, first study was for 12 weeks, now we continued for 24 weeks. And again, we looked at the, the, the memory uh, domain of a, of a neuropsychological test battery. MMC scores of about 25, so this is really early uh, AD. And again, we see that uh, memory performance increases, and the memory uh, performance increases more in the souvenir group than in the control group. And at the same time, we did measurements of uh, functional connectivity in the brains of these patients, and we did that by uh, EEG. Um, I will not explain everything about EEG because, again, of time constraints, but there are specific measurements that are relevant for, and we know that they are affected in uh, patients with Alzheimer's disease. So, for instance, the signal strength of uh, uh, electrical signal, signals in, in the brain is reduced by Alzheimer's disease. We see that over the course of 24 weeks, the signal strength decreases actually in the control group, but remains the same in the active group. Again, the, the functional connectivity, as, uh, as measured by the face lag index, is uh, lower in the control group and increases and stays higher in the active group. And then uh, the network organization finally decreases again in the control group but remains the same uh, in the active group. 
So next to the memory performance that we uh, increase, there is, this is a very good indication that indeed functional connectivity in the brain is affected positively by this nutritional intervention in early Alzheimer's disease. Uh, you can read this in uh, PLOS One if you want, in a paper by De Waal. Okay. And then finally what we did is uh, uh, in, a, in, in a reaction to a recent uh, publication by Mapstone in Nature Medicine showing that in plasma there are specific phospholipid biomarkers for uh, cognitive deterioration to MCI, from normal to MCI and from MCI to, to Alzheimer's disease, we decided to measure these phospholipid biomarkers in the plasma samples that we had from our clinical trial. And that you can show, see here uh, that five out of seven, these two not, but the other ones are all improved significantly by giving the Souvenate intervention. So next to the, 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 the other uh, uh, effects that I just uh, mentioned, we now also seem to affect a new biomarker, a plasma biomarker for uh, mild cognitive impairment. I only want to conclude by saying that uh, next to these uh, nice results in the mild AD uh, group, we are currently focusing on prodromal AD and a very large European uh, trial in the lipid diet uh, pro project uh, looking at prodromal Alzheimer's disease uh, started in 2008 and uh, the this study will be finished next year around this time so hopefully I can tell you more results about that and I thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>